Growing up, one of my favorite songs was In the mountain, in the valley, on the land, and everywhere. Glory, okay, ni pechele, no rile, ati okun. The Lord is my portion in the land of the living. The Lord is good forevermore. The Lord is my portion in the land of the living. My God is good forevermore. In my kitchen, in my bedroom, in my toilet, in the car, in the marketplace, everywhere, wherever. The Lord is my portion in the land of the living. My God is good forevermore. The Lord is my portion in the land of the living. My God is good forevermore. God is everywhere, wherever. That's why the psalmist, I like Psalm 139. The day I came across that psalm, I kept going over and over and over it severally. And I still do from time to time because it is a masterpiece that demonstrates God's presence 247. It demonstrates God's presence 247. And it set me thinking as a teenager, <laughs> so God is everywhere. He can see. He sees me. He's hearing me. I can talk to him. He's such a powerful, powerful writer by the psalmist. I'd like to read a part of it for you. And that is just to encourage you, as many of you that are going to one challenge or the other, to know that he's watching you. He's watching you. He's watching you. <laughs> I like to tell you so many things that I like. <laughs> I like to share with you. Growing up, there is this cartoon series. We bought a lot of tapes, cartoon tapes for our children that have to do with the Bible. And one of it, the song said, He's watching you, Jehovah is watching, Jehovah is watching me, Jehovah is watching you. I give you Psalm 139 as a reading assignment. The heading in my Bible says, The all knowing God. The all knowing God. It says, Oh Lord, that has searched me and known me. <laughs> That's another message. <laughs> you see, that knows my down sitting and my uprising, and that understanded my thoughts afar off. My youngest sister, not my immediate sister, I have one sister before her, my youngest sister, Prophetess Irene Guya. She doesn't like to answer that name, Prophetess. She's Reverend Mrs. Irene Guya, but she's the number one prophet. Once when she came visiting, she gave me a message. She said, I don't want to give this message, but God said I should. But I don't want to approach the person. So you say, God say. <laughs> and what did God say? He said, tell the person that the thoughts, the thoughts he or she was thinking. He said, God is not pleased at all, at all, at all with it. Tell him that the thoughts he's thinking, God is not pleased with it. <laughs> and for a very long time, I'll just sit down and be looking at it. I say, the thoughts somebody is thinking. God has time inside all this entire universe. See people to the left, the right, in that church, over 1,000. When they say pray, I go here, this one, I saw the... <laughs> Going on here, I used to be radical. Now that they say radical for this one, they carry chairs. Oh, no, they carry chairs, but for a man like this, they radical, wait, wait. I don't put my eye look. I say, hey, God, so you hear this one. As this one, they shout like this, you hear them. As this one, quiet. As, you, you know, so much will be going on in my mind, but not anymore. I've long ago settled it with my God. Thoughts, thoughts, thoughts. Yeah, the psalmist says, you know it, my sitting down and my uprising. You know my thoughts are far off. Huh? Huh? Say God. And so are you out there? 
We want to say we must take authority over our thoughts. We must guide our thoughts jealously. Proverbs 23, 7 says, Guide your heart with all diligence, for out of it flows the issues of life. A lot of us allow our hearts to go rampaging, to go, especially when people offend us. We sit down and be thinking and thinking, I used to be, not now. <laughs> In those days, yeah? Come back 10 years' time, I will repeat the conversation me and you had, especially the one we pay me. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you say pay me, but as I turn it in my mind, I'll just become like a tape recorder. And I'll be waiting to give it back to you, good measure, praise and shaking together and running over. <laughs> but thank God for his deliverance. We deliver us for plenty, plenty areas. We are saying here, deliver your thoughts. Bring your thoughts under subjection. Bring them under the authority of the throne of grace. Why? Because... We have an all-knowing God, all-knowing God that searched the heart and the veins. So, this is where, especially motives, you want to do something. Why do you want to do that which you want to do? Why are you doing it? Why? I had cause this week to teach some children, and I said to them, ask why, why, why? <laughs> they told me about one game, truth and dare. They say the truth and dare is which one do you want truth or you want to dare to do something? And a lot of the youth will go to dare something. And I say, what do you ask you? Some say, they just say, uh, clear somebody leg, push somebody, hit somebody. You know, some negative, negative instructions. And I said to them, no, ask why. Bring your thought pattern under subjection. Ask why. Why must I think like this? Why must I go this way? Why is it like this? Why is it like that? For ask a lot of questions in the place of why will not be offended. For example, I know a lot of low income people, and sometimes those workers, if they travel and they want to come back, they call me, they say, ah, mm, Please, I should send them transport. But there's this particular guy that was calling at a point. No, but I didn't even have access to the phone. So I didn't even know that even phone is ringing not to talk of picking the phone because of the schedule of my activity. I was not with phone. But there are some things when you are doing, you don't need, you can't keep your phone nearby. Otherwise, you just spoil. So he called like the answer. So later now, when he came back, he was like offended that you didn't pick my call. I said, well, you can't be there and say I didn't pick your call because you are not all-knowing. You don't know the condition that your call met me. You don't know how it is with me. Just as a lot of us are offended now by our uncles, our brothers, our this, our that. What's our area of offense? We feel that we have need. They don't answer us. We ask for just maybe 5,000, 10,000 and nobody's giving you. And it's like they hate you. But the point is, you do not know what somebody is going through. You do not know what the other person is going through. It is only our God that is the all-knowing, almighty, all-saying. Only him can do that which you want. So don't take offense. Don't be offended at anybody who didn't help you, who didn't visit you, who didn't help you. <laughs> An incident happened. We went to visit our senior pastors, um, a member of the executive body in my area. So we had a meeting. And in that meeting, one of our senior pastors was talking with another pastor and greeted him who had an issue. And after the visitation, but was not able to go back, he said, ah, I'm sorry, we came to visit you, but we didn't come back again. <laughs> now, what he said kept me thinking. He said, ah, <laughs> because uh, everybody just did, they nurse, nurse a wound. Everybody just did, they face their own challenge, their own issues. Wow. What a profound statement. That simply means that don't be offended with anyone because you are not in somebody's shoes. You are not there to know what that person is going through. So don't say, my uncle refused to help me. My dad refused to help me. So we don't even know that they they frozen their account. They are even looking for food to eat themselves. So we must be careful. It is only God that is the all-knowing and all-seeing God. And so we are back to give God the praise 
the all-seeing God, the all-knowing God, the God that is everywhere, in the marketplace, everywhere. We turn to give him the praise. Join me to worship him, to magnify him. Are you out there, you're murmuring and complaining? Are you out there, you're not saying thank you for yesterday, you're waiting for another thank you today? No, don't do that. Let's give God the praise. The all-knowing God, the all-seeing God. Let's praise him. Let's magnify him. Are you out there, you don't know Jesus? For your praise to be meaningful, please give your life to Jesus. You repeat after me, say, Lord Jesus, forgive me my sin. Have mercy on me. The minute you do that, your sins are forgiven. Get the Bible, get a daily devotional, and I'll show you that your life, my life, can never, will never, never remain the same again. Thank you so very much for streamlining with us. God bless you. On YouTube and Facebook, we have over 1,200 videos. Go like, share, subscribe. On Facebook, we have five vibrant pages, such the scriptures, nation building, missiles of truth. When you pray and every day, there is a God to answer. Let's go like, share, subscribe. Lord bless you. Keep you. Prosper all your ways. Shall all of us have our reward in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you so very much for streamlining with us. My name is Pastor Mrs. Edith Atake, General Vosia, Ban of Love Mysteries International. A pleasure knowing that you are out there. Don't forget the Bible. BIBL is not obsolete. It's God's standard of living for you. As you make it your standard, your life can never, never remain the same again. You'll be sought after because an excellence which will fall upon you. And all that you do shall speak of excellence. And where there's excellence, there is promotion, there is liberty, there is progress, there is joy evermore. God bless you. Thank you.